Compute is going to be the currency of the future, not fiat like dollars or even Bitcoin, according to Sam Altman. And he's not alone in thinking this. When AI is going to be so prevalent in everybody's lives and really powering much of the economy, that makes it quite clear that this actually might be a very accurate prediction. Compute is the only thing that's going to matter. And that's why Microsoft and OpenAI have just announced Project Stargate. So we already know that Sam Altman has been trying to raise $7 trillion for AI chip manufacturing. That's $7 trillion with a T. And he's been trying to raise money from people all over the world. And that has its own security implications, but we're going to skip over that for now. Why is Sam Altman so singularly focused on chips right now? Well, he understands that the actual software, the large language models, are becoming commoditized really quickly. And a huge part of OpenAI's budget, a huge part of Microsoft's budget, it's all going to NVIDIA. And that's why NVIDIA is now the third largest company in the entire world. Look at NVIDIA stock price over the last five years. Just five years ago, they were sitting at $47. And all the way through the end of 2022, which we all know what happened then, ChatGPT was released to the world. All of a sudden, they had this big boost. They did come back down through 2022, and so did basically the entire economy. But then since then, look at this growth, insane growth, because every single tech company realized how important AI was going to be to their company now and in the future. So they all started buying chips from NVIDIA. Now back to Sam Altman. He realizes that his margins will decrease over time if he doesn't actually own the chips that are powering the models. Because again, these models are becoming commoditized very quickly. We're seeing incredible open source models that are competing in quality with GPT-4. We have Claude 3, Opus, that is better now than GPT-4, just recently dethroned GPT-4 as the king of the LLMs. So Sam Altman realized the value is not in the models. I believe that there are going to be four main categories of winners in the AI space. Now, let's take a look at this. First, chips. This is the obvious one, and this is already where we're seeing a clear winner. Chips means the actual GPUs or whatever silicon is invented to power AI models. So that is why NVIDIA has become such a massive company. Then we have infrastructure on top of that. That is LLM monitoring tools. Those are CDNs, data visualization. We may even count agent frameworks like Crew AI in there. Then we have the models, and that is ChatGPT, Claude, Llama, and this is the most commoditized section of the AI industry already, and it's only going to continue from there. Open source models continue to get better. Closed source competition continues to heat up. So most companies that are building models are realizing that is not the long-term value. Then we have apps. Those are applications that are either built from the ground up to be AI applications or existing applications that have now integrated AI into them. That is what the end user is using, consumers and businesses. And this part of the AI sector is just starting to be seen. So much of the value captured right now, as I mentioned, is in chips. And that is why Sam Altman realizes he needs to invest big in chips. So as Sam Altman is raising $7 trillion to build chip factories, maybe all over the world, it was just announced that Microsoft and OpenAI are planning a $100 billion data center project called Project Stargate. So let's take a look at what Reuters says about that. Microsoft and OpenAI are working on plans for a data center project that could cost as much as $100 billion and include an artificial intelligence supercomputer called Stargate, set to launch in 2028. So I don't quite understand why they're calling it a supercomputer because it's really just a data center as far as I understand it. And $100 billion might sound like a lot of money, but we're talking about Microsoft, the biggest company in the entire world. They are worth trillions of dollars. And when Sam Altman says he's raising $7 trillion to build data centers, $100 billion now sounds like a kind of measly amount. So the information reported that Microsoft would likely finance the project, which is expected to be 100 times more costly than some of the biggest existing data centers. Now, I go back to the relationship between Microsoft and OpenAI, and it's kind of crazy to me that Microsoft is able to do all of these things without getting any oversight from the SEC and seemingly staying out of trouble with the Elon Musk lawsuit. They own 49% of OpenAI, and 
And those two companies continue to get closer and closer together. And apparently this supercomputer called Stargate is going to be the fifth phase of five phases to roll out a new generation of computing centers for artificial intelligence. Altman and Microsoft have spread the supercomputers across five phases with Stargate as the fifth phase. Microsoft is working on a smaller fourth phase supercomputer for OpenAI to be launched around 2026 according to a report. Microsoft and OpenAI are in the middle of the third phase of the five phase plan with a significant portion of the cost for the next two phases involving acquiring the needed AI chips. So this is really an arms race and Microsoft is investing heavily to not miss out on the AI rush. And they're already way ahead of many other companies. And I also think back to Microsoft basically missing the entire mobile wave. And so they did not wanna make that mistake again, which is why they've been so aggressive in investing in OpenAI and compute and everything else. Now back to compute being the currency of the future. What does that actually mean? Well, if the most important thing in the future is powering AI models, dollars don't directly power AI models. It is two things, silicon and electricity. Both of those things are incredibly important. And I wanna show you this. This is something from semianalysis.com and this shows what could be the future of data centers. Basically, enormous data centers and right next to it, nuclear power plants. Because again, you need two things to power AI. You need silicon, you need the actual GPUs or the chips, and you need electricity, and you need both. And these chips require tons of electricity, more than what is even possible to generate today. And I've even read reports that some data center creators can't even build big enough data centers because if they turned it on, it would literally use up all the power of that state instantly. So they actually have to spread out their data centers throughout the country and throughout the world to basically make sure they don't take down the grid. That's kind of insane to think about. So if we have these data centers and these nuclear power plants right next to them spread all over the country, all of a sudden we have these very modular and pretty secure data centers and electricity that would be very hard to take down from hacking or terrorist attacks or anything like that. So this is kind of cool to think about what the future could be. And NVIDIA needs some competition. They own the vast majority of the GPU market right now. And that is why, again, they have skyrocketed to become the third largest company in the world and probably are gonna take over the second largest company position very soon. And they already have some competition with Grok, G-R-O-Q, which I've covered in depth in the last few weeks, which is a completely new architecture for chips. And they're called LPUs and they run inference at insane speeds that are really almost impossible for GPUs to match. And now let's take a look at Sam Altman being interviewed by Lex Freeman, where he specifically talks about compute being the most valuable commodity in the future. Look, I think compute is going to be the currency of the future. I think it will be maybe the most precious commodity in the world. And I think we should be investing heavily to make a lot more compute. Um, compute is, it's an unusual, I think it's going to be an unusual market. Um, you know, people think about the market for like chips for mobile phones or something like that. And you can say that, okay, there's 8 billion people in the world. Maybe 7 billion of them have phones. Maybe they are 6 billion, let's say. They upgrade every two years. So the market per year is 3 billion system on chip for smartphones. And if you make 30 billion, you will not sell 10 times as many phones because most people have one phone. But compute is different. Like intelligence is going to be more like energy or something like that, where the only thing that I think makes sense to talk about is at price X, the world will use this much compute and at price Y, the world will use this much compute. Because if it's really cheap, I'll have it like reading my email all day, like giving me suggestions about what I maybe should think about or work on and trying to cure cancer. And if it's really expensive, maybe I'll only use it or will only use it to try to cure cancer. So I think the world is going to want a tremendous amount of compute. And there's a lot of parts of that that are hard. Uh, energy is the hardest part. Building data centers is also hard. The supply chain is harder than, of course, fabricating enough chips is hard. But this seems to me where things are going. Like we're gonna want an amount of compute that's just hard to reason about right now. All right, that's a really cool clip. And he also specifically calls out the need for reactors and new energy techniques, because basically we're not gonna be able to power these new supercomputers that we're trying to place all over the country and all over the world. And Elon Musk agrees. Let's watch this clip where Elon Musk was interviewed and he talks about how important compute and specifically how important electricity is gonna be. And he also doesn't think we're 
we're going to be able to produce enough step down transformers, which is necessary for generating and converting the electricity to use in these chips. The constraints that AI compute and very predictable. I've actually predicted this over a year ago. So over a year ago, the shortage was chips, neural net chips. Then I, I, it was very easy to predict that the, the, the next shortage will be voltage step-down transformers. So it's, you get, you've got to feed the power to these things. So if you've got 100 to 300 kilovolts coming out of your, a utility, and it's got to step all the way down to you know 0.6 volts, that's a lot of stepping down. So n now we're in step-down. And I, this is my not that funny joke, which is that they need transformers to run transformers because the you know the AI is like there's this thing called a transformer in AI. It's a it's a neural a neural I don't know it's a combination of sort of neural nets, and they're running out of transformers to run transformers. Then the next shortage will be electricity. So I think next year you'll see the electricity that they just can't find enough electricity to run all the chips. So if the future currency is compute. How do we get ahead of that? Well, you can obviously make investments in compute companies like NVIDIA, and this is not investment advice, but what else can you do? This is actually something that I'm thinking about a lot lately. I'd love to hear your opinions. Drop them in the comments below, because I don't have the answer. Is my RTX 4090 going to increase in value over time? I doubt it, but it's interesting to think about. And OpenAI and Microsoft are not the only ones investing tremendously to build out compute. Meta is also spending billions to buy 350,000 NVIDIA H100 GPUs. That is absolutely insane to think about. And it kind of makes sense too. All of the biggest tech companies are doing this. Now, let me talk about why that's so important. When you have the best AI researchers in the world, the leading minds in AI research, where do you think they're gonna wanna go work? They want to work wherever they have the most powerful compute because that is what's going to power their research. So this is not only an investment in being able to build the models, but this is an investment in being able to attract the greatest minds throughout the world. And these top companies realize that. And Google is included in this. They already have their TPUs, which is their specific Google custom chips for compute. And fun fact, the TPUs were invented by Jonathan Ross, who is now the CEO of Grok, G-R-O-Q Grok, which makes LPUs, which power inference at insane speeds, which again, I've been talking about lately. So again, this is a complete arms race between the biggest companies in the world already. I don't see how these companies can continue to gather power and consolidate power and just become bigger without the economy seeing really negative effects of that. So what do you think? If you liked this video, please consider giving a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.